Well, you guys probably thought we were done with the hunting by now, considering the Wilderness Living Challenge is finished. But that's not the case. We're in the controlled hunt now. So we get to dress like pumpkins. Pretty good morning. Had a, a doe come out just a little bit out of sight of my range of comfort. I've got a trail camera here. Blew over, so we're gonna get to see what's on it. Um, looks like there's a doe in a buck at least. I'm gonna rearrange that and put it back over here in the bush a little bit more. Change the cart out. And uh, yeah, that doe came out probably 60 yards or so, 60, 70 yards. Came out of the bush just behind me. Came out for feeding the soybean. Uh, kind of cool to see them, how they behave in the in the rain. It's cold, it's almost freezing. But they'll, they'll come out in the rain just the same as anything else. Shake themselves off like dogs. Um, but they're out for the calories now just to stay warm. So they gotta pack it on. We'll see if she comes back. I, ha I can take a buck or a doe. But I've, I wanted to get a deer on film for a long time. Maybe I should have shot this morning, I don't know. Um, I just didn't feel comfortable with it. I don't wanna push it. I'll try again. I'm sure I'll get another chance at some point, <laughs> if not this year, next year. I went out 20 times my first year filming. Last year I didn't go out as much. I was pretty busy with everything else, with the cabin build and all that stuff. But the year before that I went out 20 times and I never got one single opportunity at a deer. Man, it's cold. Let's get back to the cabin. Well, it sure is nice to have a place to dry off after a hunt like this. Pretty thankful to have the cabin. I'm gonna bring some food over. We're gonna have some breakfast. Don't think he was successful, but we'll find out. Uh, he said he was gonna give it another few minutes. So I'm guessing if you're gonna give it another few minutes, you probably didn't see anything. Uh, just step in here, get the lights flicked on. Got the loft lights there. We're gonna enjoy a little bit of a relax. It's kind of like deer camp. It was meant to be more deer campy. We already meant to made a pretty big dent on, on the hunt here. Uh, during the wilderness living challenge you guys are following that i'm sure you did and now it's just like back to business so back to business is just getting more food out of a propane tank here we just flick that on and then we have another valve here which runs the uh, main line back down so we turn that over so that it's straight i can do this with one hand there we go so now it's piped directly into the cabin and we can simply flick the stove on and be ready to cook. That's the lap of luxury, along with our off-grid lighting system. This thing's all set. I'm sure you watch the Windows Living Challenge, but we've got cots up there, we can sleep up there. Look at our big table. We've got episodes on how we all put this together. I think Mark will be pretty excited that I saw a doe. I don't think he'll be disappointed that I passed on. He wants to do bucks only this year to rejuvenate the deer population. Talked a little bit about how difficult it is to get a deer here. It's like super high pressure and super low deer population um, makes it super challenging, right? So there's lots of bush for them to hide in and then there's lots of food for them to eat so they don't have to walk around a whole ton to get their food which means we don't see them all that often. So it's a tricky hunt. It's harder to film too. But anyway, maybe we'll get it done. You guys stay tuned. That's all you can do. That's all I'm doing, I'm staying tuned. Let's head down to uh, trail camera. I've got a trail camera over here, right near the cabin over a kind of a mock scrape. It's not an actual scrape. It's more like I made it. <laughs> and there hasn't been a ton of traffic. I have a, we left the advanced trap out here uh, I tripped it so that no animals could go in it and we've been keeping an eye on that because we weren't getting any raccoon activity during the wilderness living challenge. It was a huge disappointment to Jeremy because he really wanted raccoon. He loves raccoon and uh, Delphine, his partner, who he's doing the big wild year with. He's eating only wild food for the entire year. It's their second favorite food. Guess which is their first? Bear meat. And they didn't get a bear. Uh, as I'm filming this, the bear season's closed, so they weren't successful doing that. So they do baiting. Uh, it's really the only way you're going to get a bear. Uh, see how dense the forest is? It's hard to see anywhere in it. And bears are pretty, I mean, they're smart, right? They're smart like every other animal, so they're not going to put themselves at risk for no reason. Anyway, so I'm going to run some clips now of the trail camera over the mock scrape here. Here's the mark. Uh, see the mock scrape? Mock scrape there. Oh, there's a track in it. There is a deer track in it. I don't know if you guys can see that. There's a deer track right there. So this camera should have something on it. I'm excited to check that. But I want to show you the 
advanced trap over here. Oh, there's tracks right through here. The deer activity is picking up. That is really good news. There's a deer went right through. I made a trail over here through the swamp. It's hard for them to get through the swamp. So I made a trail through here. So I started using this. I have a tree stand over here, uh, which I stopped using because the deer stopped going through here. Anyway, the advanced traps here. We've got all kinds of uh, leftover animal bits from the Lotus Living Challenge. There's goose, there's uh, turkey guts, there's raccoon guts, there's just everything. Anyway, there's peanut butter, which was our original bait. Um, so I'm going to run some clips over right now of what was happening since. Um, I can tell you there's a possum. <laughs> there's an awesome possum. We don't have a lot of possums around here. There's an awesome possum and there's some raccoons visiting that uh, trap now. So, I mean, time for Jeremy to come back up and get his fill of raccoons, right? All right, now I gotta check this camera because I really wanna know what was standing in that, that uh, mock scrape. Uh, mock scrape, you just scrape the leaves out and make sure you have a licking branch. This is a licking branch. So a licking branch is something above the scrape and the deer will mess around with that with their antlers and eyes. They've got scent glands in the orbital area of their eye and that will uh, alert the other deer of what's in the neighborhood. So, you know, if it's a buck, it's like, ah, I'm here. And if it's a doe, it's like, ah, I'm here. So they're just communicating with each other through scent, olfaction. All right, let's check. We've got eight triggers. Uh, I'll go to playback. The first one is me. Oh, there's a little buck. Little little weird buck. He's got like uh, half an antler <laughs> set. So you guys are seeing that now. What's the next one? There's a squirrel. Uh, there, there's our awesome possum. Uh, what's next? That looks like me. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. I mean, it was a little buck. A little buck came here, checked the scrape, and he took off. If I don't end up feeling my deer tag or even coming close to it, I've got a backup plan. I think it's pretty ingenious. So I found another walnut tree and this thing was absolutely loaded. So I ended up getting three garbage pails full of black walnuts. You guys know where this is going yet? Well, <laughs> I'm gonna get myself a scope cam and we're gonna use the stands that I have to load up on squirrel meat instead of deer meat. And I have a running theory in my head here that if I switch to collecting just squirrel meat, I could probably get the equivalent of a deer's worth of meat just by going after squirrels instead of deer. That's my theory. Maybe we'll test it out. Maybe we won't have to. Regardless, I'm gonna put all those walnuts to use. We'll scatter them around the cabin and then hopefully a couple of them get planted into walnut trees and then we'll have not only some good wood to build out of, but while it's growing, we'll be able to feed the squirrels. So, hey, all in all, I think it's the most ingenious plan I've come up with so far. What do you guys think? So instead of sitting there waiting for your deer to come, I just pick off squirrels all day long. I just saw a squirrel go by. I knew a squirrel would go by. I just didn't have my gun ready. It's tempting to shoot them, but then you gotta clean them too. So I didn't quite think that through. You clean one deer, take a day, and you have meat for a year if you eat it once a, once a week, twice a week. You shoot 100 squirrels, I gotta clean a hundred squirrels. And you gotta eat a squirrel every week for twice a week for a whole year. If that math makes any sense. If 
you like cleaning squirrels. Let's see if that guy comes back. You could always throw some walnuts out there. Guaranteed action. I'm gonna save that for later though. That's plan B. Plan A is to get a deer. We might get a squirrel today. We're still waiting for Mark to get here. Maybe he shot a deer. Can have some tenderloin this morning for breakfast. That would be pretty sweet. Oh man. There's a squirrel. Squirrel, squirrel. <laughs> Grab it, the 22 is all sighted in. Is it loaded right now? Yeah, it's ready to go. If you got a shot, take it. See him? Should probably bring that 22 in, then we could just crack the door open and pop it. Should throw the walnuts out here and then we'll have a real good time. <laughs> Wait for them to come in. Are these farm eggs? Yep. So we got farm eggs, nice. And right on the farm, fresh as fresh can be. Probably laid yesterday. Special, special ham. Yeah. For ham or pig. It's got actually tan steak. We'll call it pig because from it, those hogs. It's from the hogs you guys saw um, Mark raise at the farm. Yeah. So we're going to get a taste of it. It's already smoked, so we just have to heat it up. Basically, yeah. Smoked, cooked. Yep. <laughs> what so, did they weigh out as? 280 on the rail. Nice. That was a big pig. I asked the guy and he said, yeah, those are bigger than normal. Well, the difference between like us trying to, trying to get a deer and being unsuccessful and then actually just putting the labor into getting a, a pig, the return is huge. Like agriculture is huge. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't make sense to, I mean. Between the chickens, the hog, the bears from this year. Yeah. And then hopefully a deer. You're just all organic. And then like all the fish. All hands on your own stuff. The fish. The fish. Hey. It, but the goal is in my household, we do not buy meat. We've either raised or hunted all of our meat. You're, you're there now. Pretty much. I mean, I I can live without the venison, but I want that in the right. diet, right? I don't yeah. Want well, that's 100% that. <laughs> yeah. wild. Yeah. Well, and so, it, so it's a bear. Like, yeah. Are you filming it all on the, the deer hunt? Nope. No. And it, well, I didn't today. It's pouring rain. So yeah. I didn't bother taking the camera out. Pretty tough conditions. Yeah. We're just talking about whether. Yeah. <laughs> tree umbrella or whatever. <laughs> talking about whether I should have taken that shot this morning and Mark agrees. Like, you like, wouldn't have risked it. No. And so it was raining too, and. I like, wouldn't have taken it. I've got iron sights. I'll show you. But uh, iron sights means like the deer is exactly the same size as you see it yeah. in real life. Yeah. So when you put, when you line everything up, that deer is like still that big, <laughs> you know, and maybe 70 to hundred yards. I don't know. I'm just guessing, right? Pace it off. It, it looks yeah close, but pouring rain. It's a little dark. Runs 300 yards. Yeah. You've lost blood within 50 yards. So yeah. So it's gotta be a pretty money shot. And it was cold and <laughs> pouring rain. <laughs> yeah, I showed a bit of that, but uh, I know I would have liked to film more, but you know, it is what it is. It just, why well, the camera starts dripping water and then that's it. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. any waterproof camera. Did you see anything? I have, can't be sure. Eyes could be playing tricks on you. I think I had a deer cross a half hour before legal light. Yeah. But I don't know. I also thought I saw a coyote run across, a, you know, 20 minutes before that. But yeah. then I did figure out what it was. There's a big gray owl in there and you swooped down and you went across that path. And then came back the other way and then went back that way again. So I think that gray fleeting thing going through yeah. is probably that owl. Yeah. You never know what's going to happen. Yeah. Oh. You, how many shots did you hear? Two or three? Uh, three. shots? Three, three shots. So Two were like bang, but, bang. So somebody's so one guy. Somebody made an insurance sh shot on the yeah. deer. <laughs> yeah. It was, yeah. Essentially what I did last year. Right. Yeah. Take two shots if you can. Too, too quick. As fast as I could. Mm -hmm. I did that because of my bear incident the year before. Right. I should well, have taken you can take my another shot. shot. Well, it doesn't, yeah, yeah. you know, you, you probably hit on the first shot, but if you, you can take a second shot. Same with bull hunting. You know, you shoot your deer and he stumbles and he, and he stays there for a second, knock another yeah. arrow. It doesn't hurt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Last year it was a hard shot. Yeah. Oh, dude, turkeys, turkeys, whole pile of turkeys. Freaking turkeys there, dude. Is the season still open? Mm. I have a turkey day. I'd have to look on my phone at the rigs and see if it's closed. What do you have to shoot with? Your shotgun. <laughs> well, there's some way off to the left still yet. There's probably 15 there. Okay. 
hilarious. Oh, here's another one. Yes. Oh, how funny is that? There's a whole mess of turkeys out here. <laughs> Mark's like, you got your turkey tag? I do have my turkey tag, but I think it closed like two days ago. It's like 13 uh, turkeys. It's funny. So you always gotta be ready. It's beauty about being like right Having the cabin right here is just so much. Like, like literally, a deer could show up here at any time. Turkey just closed. Yeah, <laughs> they're safe. Checking, checking the regs. Yeah, and then they're gonna close it just because the the gun hunts on, right? Everybody would be shooting. Yeah, they're everybody just gonna. They would come in with a turkey load in their pocket and change their shell out and shoot a turkey out of a tree stand. We got no cutlery. <laughs> just trying to figure out what to use. We're classy. <laughs> with their fingers. That's fine. You can see how pretty impromptu everything's done. Like, you want to meet up for um, brunch after? Mark said, yep, yeah, what do you got? Yeah, I got some pork and some eggs. I'm like, all right, I'll grab the cooking stuff. I haven't been leaving the cooking stuff out here all the time because you have no real way to wash it, except down in the creek with freezing cold water. It's not gonna work too well. Feel free to use um, a skinner. A skinning knife? Yeah. It's um, Goldman Skinner. You gonna try walnut? I'm gonna try it. Watch fingers. You gonna yeah. use the Skinner? Yeah. <laughs> Just gotta get that. It's pretty sharp, so I'm gonna make sure I get it well away from my fingers. I mean, you got one piece out. Is that from before? No. There you go. You got it. No, nice. that's the first, first, first crack. That's the thing you notice about those walnuts is they have so many little veins and pockets. Not like a domestic one where they bred so that they don't have those in there. But it's gotta be like. Big prize for a squirrel to get that much uh, protein. And I would like to know how a squirrel can actually break that if you got to hit it with an axe. <laughs> they just chew it with their teeth. I don't, I don't <laughs> want to ever get bit by a squirrel. No, me neither. It doesn't taste bad, but it doesn't, like, it still tastes like a walnut, though. Does it taste like a walnut? Yeah. So you think it's all right? Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah. I think like it'd be a pain to have to break into a, a hundred of them. <laughs> yeah, we, did, we tried an experiment where you. See, saw how many how long it would take it took us an hour to produce 1500 calories with the walnuts it was like a small bag it take you 1500 calories to get that 1500 <laughs> calories yeah but people are famous for processing their food so we have machines to do all that work for us imagine just sitting there by yourself <laughs> in the woods <laughs> like on a pile of walnuts just crushing them and eating them oh, all day and that guy on the bicycle he has sacks of them, like two big sacks hanging like... Really? Mm -hmm. All processed. So he was definitely collecting them to keep Oh, yeah. Because he was putting them on his saddlebag, whatever right. thingy, on the back of his bicycle. Yeah. And, it was a huge, and he had a milk crate you on should there have said, as well. You should have said, hi, I'm, I'm from the Wooded Beardsman channel. Mm -hmm. I bet you would have been like, hey, I know you guys. Yeah. There's no way there's a guy out there collecting walnuts like we are. Not coming across our channel. It's a super cold morning. Had no deer today. I'm gonna go back and uh, warm up. I'll give it a try again tomorrow. That's all I can do, just keep trying. Eventually a deer will come out. Breathing. We're using slugs. So it's a 20 gauge and uh, just got a slug at the end instead of shot. I just rolled a coyote. <laughs> I came out over here. I got the axe out a dog, <laughs> but it had a, a rabbit in its mouth or something. And uh, it was on a little bit of a trot. I missed it on its first shot. <laughs> it was bo booting it over this way. <laughs> Barrel rolled it. <laughs> it was dead just out here. Well, guys, it looks like that's it for the deer. Nothing moving this morning. Um, I see out in the field where a coyote dropped something, so I'm curious to see what it is. I'm gonna take a walk over there and check it out. 
and uh, we'll figure, figure out what we're gonna do with the coyote. I definitely want to give it a taste. Um, I've eaten a fox before. You guys have seen that video, I'm sure. Catch and cook fox. So the coyote's been on the menu for a long time. I'll definitely salvage the tail. Uh, depending on where I hit, uh, will determine whether I keep the uh, pelt if it's in good shape. There's tons of coyote around here. There's some studies on coyote showing that they take hundreds of fawns every year. So taking one coyote out is taking out or is providing back a bunch of deer. So there's a little bit of an imbalance here. We hear coyotes howling all the time. In fact, when I was out here last time uh, during the Wilderness Living Challenge, there was a chorus of coyotes um, both at the cabin uh, and over at this spot as well. So there's no shortage of them. It's a renewable resource. You take one out, 10 more come back. So, hey, we get what nature gives us. If it's giving us a coyote, that's what we're eating today. I'm actually more curious to see what the coyote dropped rather than go and look at the coyote. <laughs> I'm sure you guys are too, so let's go check it out. It looks white, which is uh, kind of weird, right? There's not any snowshoe hair around here, so I'm not sure what would be white. Uh, it could be the bottom of a cottontail rabbit. I'm not sure if they have a white underbelly. I don't think they do. Kind of a lightish color. They're just coming up on it now here. I'm gonna go check with the jail cram after as well. See if there's anything moving. Looks like a big coyote over there though. <laughs> we'll check that, check that guy out next. What is this? I have no idea what that is. It's a hide of some sort of a perfectly white animal. That's bizarre. I'll flip you guys over. Let you let me know what you think this thing is. What in the heck is that? It's completely white fur. Man, I don't even know. White fur. I'm wondering if that's somebody's cat. <laughs> like, there's no snowshoe hair around here, period. There's only cottontails. Um, snowshoe hair is a dual phase. They'll go from brown to white, but there's no snow. So it's not a, it's not a wild hair, not, and they're not here anyway. There's a couple big deer tracks out here. Looks like from last night. That coyote probably ate somebody's house cat a white house cat. I cannot think of anything else that would be white like that. Like, white like that now doesn't make any sense for any wild animal since there's no snow and no chance of getting any snow either. All right, well, this is the first time I've ever been close to a uh, coyote before. He's kind of freaking me out a little bit. Let's see where I smoke this guy. He's been laying still for a long time, so. Yep, I, uh, Pretty much got it in the kill spot, <laughs> right behind the shoulder. No wonder he did a snow plow. Not a bad looking coyote. Oh, so weird to look at these animals. But, uh, it's got a nice tail, a nice, fairly nice pelt. So, hey, maybe salvageable. Give him a boot, see if he's still moving. I don't know, you guys wanna have a look at them? Maybe I'll flip them over. <laughs> anyway, there she is. Yeah. So there's the coyote here. And uh, I shot him from that stand right there. So he first came out uh, behind me and he went this way. And then that's where that, uh, you know, that cat fur is over there. And then he beelined it this way. He gave me a perfect bride slide shot. And I tucked it in. I said right behind the shoulder. Well, if you guys can think of anything else that that fur might be from, we're in Ontario, <clears throat> let me know because I think it's somebody's house cat. And that's why these animals need to be um, managed. I mean, they'll take, they'll take dogs, they'll take cats, they'll take any domestic animal whatsoever. They'll take livestock. So... I mean, it's not like we have to get rid of all of them, but we have to <clears throat> manage them just like we have to manage every other animal. 
Simple as that. We'll make use of it. I'll take a bite. But uh, I can definitely smell it. It smells like, it smells like a, coy a coyote. It smells like a dog. So we'll get this back to the cabin and I don't know. I think I'll take the back straps off. Last time I ate the fox, I ate the, the legs and <clears throat> it actually tasted really good. I prepared it really well. But then afterwards, I noticed this a really, really pungent, strong dog, wet dog taste in my mouth. And it didn't leave. And I didn't have anything to drink at the time because I cooked it out in the woods. And, I, and I, on my way home, I'm just like, oh man, that's that, just that taste stuck with me. So I don't think I'm going to do that again. But I'll do the back straps. It'd be kind of neat to do like a sausage and then you can call it a hot dog. <laughs> I don't know if I'll go to that extent. Maybe we'll just like... Maybe we'll just fry it up in medallions and put some butter and some onions in there or something like that. Anyway, we'll figure something out. Well, I only just checked this trail camera yesterday, but it had fallen over. Uh, it's just on a tripod here, so if the wind blows, it knocks it over. <clears throat> There's that cornfield just behind us here. So it's a good idea to sneak over here with the gun and then just check to see if there's any deer lingering in that field. Usually by now they're not there anymore. But you never know. Yeah, just me. So nothing even came from this cornfield back to the spot where I'm hunting. In the car? I put it in the car. Are you serious? <laughs> you don't know what it is yet. How small is it? <laughs> <laughs> gave her a, gave her a good roll too. Good. Well, I can see where you hit it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I missed the first shot, yeah. and then it started doing a 90. Yeah. Right in front of me. And I'm like, all right, full tilt. Put it right behind the shoulder. Mm -hmm. It was kind of male or female? Male. Big male. That is it's a big meal. It's like 70 pounds or so. Isn't it that heavy? Yeah. <laughs> Might not be able to do it. <laughs> it's heavy. <laughs> Gotta wipe out. <laughs> oh, it's heavy. So how much of this are we gonna eat, Mark? Back straps? I'm gonna eat zero. <laughs> you can eat whatever you want. You're not gonna eat any of it? No way. So you noticed uh, there's a patch here that's missing. So I don't know if I'm gonna be able to keep that fur anymore. The whole section here that's all plowed out. What do you think? Probably not. No? I think he's been uh, working his way to get in and I would under things and eating things he's not supposed to be eating. I don't know. We'll keep the tail anyway and then uh, we'll just zip her down and take the back straps out. So we got one back strap. We're going to do the other back strap. Um, I ate the legs of the fox before and I'm not going to do that with the coyote because I know that the legs of the dog, it's a dog, let's face it, tastes exactly like you would think it would taste. It tastes like a dog smells. So I'm hoping the back straps is gonna be, not be as, actually it doesn't, it doesn't smell bad. It doesn't smell like dog, I should say. Uh, but the coyote does smell like dog. Mark was saying, agreed. <laughs> like how I smell in my trunk. <laughs> but this doesn't smell. So I have some hope that it's actually gonna be um, edible. Maybe even incredible. Palatable? <laughs> Palatable. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's going to be. You don't think it's going to be incredible? I think you're going to have a waxy foam on the roof of your mouth and it's going to taste horrid. It's a pretty red meat anyway. I know what you're thinking. The dog's scared of me because we're eating coyote. That's just silly. She's afraid of the camera. And she's always has been. So don't be silly about stuff. How beautiful is it today? Check out the cabin. Doesn't it look awesome with a little bit of snow on the ground? It's just the dusting, but uh, 
I think it's gonna disappear. I don't think it's gonna stay. It's a little too early for us to have snow permanently. It's nice to see, and hopefully it's gonna get those deer fired up, but I'm running out of time. Basically I have this evening hunt, <clears throat> and I could do morning and evening tomorrow. And then that's it for the controlled hunt anyway, but the bow hunt's gonna continue for another six weeks. Uh, less one, so five weeks, because there's another second muzzleloader hunt, uh, which is a second controlled hunt. And you have to apply for that, and you can't do both. We do one or the other. I'll probably just continue. Oh, I can't do the the muzzleloader, but I can continue to do the bow, and I probably will. But my chances become slimmer and slimmer as the days go by. So I'm hoping to get it done quicker, quicker than later, sooner than later. That's the term. That's the saying. Anyway, let's cook some coyote. I just checked the scrape cam and there's a doe that came through which is pretty cool but also there's an interesting critter nearby i had another coyote and i'm following the tracks down the trail i made here down toward my stand and as you know the advanced trap guess what it had an inspection of the advanced trap it's already triggered so we can't get in but that would have been pretty cool if we actually caught one in the advanced trap i'm going to show you it came around here I went around the other side here. I've already, already kind of messed up these tracks already, but it came over here to the opposite side. I had a look over there. We've got the uh, goose feathers down in the corner. So I went out and checked out that. And then it came over here on the rest of its route. And I'm gonna flip you around. I'm gonna show you all the tracks that are here. So none of these tracks are mine. It stepped here, 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 and here, here, and there. So really what it did was it went over there and then it came back again. And then it went back here again and checked over here again and then checked over there again. Now we've got this advanced trap on a coyote route and the coyote knows there's food here. So that's pretty darn cool. So it'll probably come back. But uh, let's see how far it went through here. It's getting a little deep. I don't want to get too wet here because I am going to try to go out for deer again later today. And it uh, looks like it made it all the way through the swamp here to the other side. I'm not going to go this way because there's nothing else over on this side. I do want to try to get to the back, but I don't know if I'm going to get across today. It really depends how much water there is here. It's been a while since I've been able to access the back of the property just because it's been raining so much and flooded. But hey, what do you guys think about getting that advanced trap fired back up again and us trying to get one trapped in there? We've got to wait a little bit longer because right now the raccoons are still active and we're just going to have to get a whole mess of raccoons out of there all the time. You know the raccoons, they're easy to trap, or are they? I don't know, did you guys watch the Wilderness Living Challenge? Season number six? They threw us for a loop, that's for darn sure. Just cleaning the pan off, got some soap in there and some water. We need running water here, did I mention that before? We do not have running water, that's something that we need to fix. Maybe some rain collection system, and then we can just pipe it in here and then gravity feed it out. That would probably be fine, although in the winter it's not going to work at all. We'd have to, we still have a problem. Washing is a definitely a pretty critical thing. I did some research on these coyotes and eating them, and they carry a tapeworm, which is very common in this area. 25%, so one out of every four coyote carry the tapeworm. And it's found obviously in the intestines and the fecal matter. Um, so if you notice, anytime I handled the coyote, I used gloves. The reason for that is because I had read this article before, so I double checked on it. The uh, tapeworm can't be killed uh, unless it's frozen at negative 80 degrees Celsius or something crazy like that, minus 50 or 80 degrees Celsius for like two days. It can be desiccated at 30 degrees Celsius at 40% uh, humidity for two days. That'll kill it as well. And that's if it's, you know, 100% dry. And then the third way is obviously cooking at heat. So over 70 degrees Celsius. So basically once it gets to 100 or boiling, it kills it. The only thing that you have to really worry about is brain matter and uh, spinal tissue. Prions are indestructible. You can't cook them or freeze them. They just basically last forever. Some prehistoric beast that's just never gonna go away. Um, so I'm gonna cook the coyote. I got some prepared, pre-prepared rice and broccoli. So it's gonna be refried coyote stir fry. How does that sound? So I've got in my Ziploc bag here, I've got coyote cubed and staked. Uh, we'll probably try, I wanna try both ways because I wanna try eating just uh, the, the meat itself, probably some adobo spices uh, seasoning. And then just to see what it tastes like, see what the flavor's like, and then I'll do a proper stir fry. So I've got uh, some soy sauce and a little baby, little baby bottle here. 
and uh, some oil for cooking. And that's all I'm gonna do. Um, it's kind of an Asian theme, isn't it? The stir fry coyote. I'm not going anywhere with this. Maybe you guys are. But uh, I thought I'd try to think of a way to make it like a proper dish because you know I haven't been making proper dishes. So now that we have the cabin, we can kind of take, take our time and make a proper dish. I ordinarily wouldn't even be using any of this foreign material. I just eat the, the thing over the fire, the thing, the coyote over the fire and be done with it. So question is, is Mark gonna eat it? Or is he gonna go hungry? Or is he gonna bring his own food? <laughs> he messaged me the other day and he asked me if I ate that thing. I'm guessing that's a sign of him not wanting to eat that thing. Would you guys eat that thing? <laughs> I'm up for it, I'll eat anything once. I seem to have seen more grouse this year than I have in past years. There's a ton of grouse. Jeremy got five yesterday. Yeah. Deer hunting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jeremy was out deer hunting. We're talking about how many grouse there are this year. Yeah. So, on the Ranella podcast, he was saying how if you want to increase your population of grouse, you got to have, like, in order for a grouse to be okay with this area he needs a drumming log yep his specific drumming log yep and enough sight line around this entire drumming log to feel comfortable mm -hmm. and he's like if you own have private land and you want to increase your population there's already a population there but you want to to expand go and set yourself up these perfect drumming logs randomly so then when their breeding happens and whatever and they get themselves more stable ground to start drawing in and Draw the females in. Yeah. And that yeah. makes sense. Yeah, yeah. To instantly double your population. To have a, a resident male. Wow. Pu pulling in. It's like it's pulls like, in the females or whatever, yeah. yeah. And then you you know, offspring, if you can if they stay alive, then yeah. they need a drumming log as well. Yeah. So if they if there's more drumming logs around. Yeah, it makes sense. This is only a taste. I want it there's only wadobo spice on there. And then I'm gonna make a whole stir fry. Because i, I got to make it last because I'm going to go out uh, looking for a deer this afternoon. It's not watering at all? Like It, it looks no. like meat, doesn't it? It just looks like meat. You, but You're talking about Steve Rinella and he, he talked about... Well, he ate, a, he ate a coyote. Okay, so he ate the coyote. And when he was filming it, he talked about how it was good. Yeah. And then his recollection on uh, Joe Rogan's podcast was it was not good and he would never mess with a coyote ever again. So this is a shout out, you guys want to tweet this or whatever to, to Ranella and ask him his official stance on coyote because... But did he eat one he, and it was bad and try it again? Because some guys say you got to so. try stuff twice. No, he said I never, I, he said he tried coyote and he would yeah. never mess with one again. He would like, meaning he would never hunt it because you, you, if you're going to hunt something, you got to eat it. Yep. Yeah. Um, so he, he has conflicting viewpoints on whether coyote is good. He singe cooked it. He burnt all the hair off of it, split it in half, threw it on the barbecue. I've and never he, seen it. And he was cutting the pieces of off. So there's like a two minute video on YouTube. Maybe I'll link up uh, to it. It's a very popular coyote eating video. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and, he, and he's like, oh, it's good. It tastes like duck, tastes like uh, whatever. It tastes like goose or whatever. And they, they go through a bunch of different scenarios of what it tastes like. And then, and then, and then his, but his, his recollection is- I don't know, yeah. His recollection is that it's not good. So, well, I just watched. This is the backstraps. Yeah. I just watched somebody else eat one and they said it was absolutely horrible. <laughs> so, you're cinching back and you're yeah. not passed out of it. I'm not sure. It's, not sure. The, the funny thing is, it actually smells good. It smells great. It smells good. But I that could just be the adobo spice. With my experience with eating meat, wild meat, if you smell it, and it smells okay, it is okay. Yeah, if yeah. you smell it and it smells bad, it's gonna taste like yeah, it smells. It smells dirty and swampy, it's gonna taste dirty and swampy. Yeah, and it, it's all about the glands, right? So we avoided the glands entirely by eating, the, by preparing only the back straps. If we had prepared the legs, or anywhere near you know, the, the butt area, you would have potentially had some scent okay, yeah. mixed in. And it would have just tasted like the yeah, scent. If like, this was a rump roast, I guarantee you I wouldn't be eating it. No. 
it's well, too, much, give it, too much going on back there. I would give it a go. Anyway, yeah, it's safe. It's cooked yeah. all the way through. It's safe. All right, let's see. What you you going to wait for me? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you're not even going to try at the same time? We're not going to cheers it? No. No, you're not, you're not a Jeremy. Well, all right. Are you going to do it? Uh, all right. I'm going to cheers it. It's going to be adventurous. All right. All right. Cheers. It actually smells good. Cheers. <laughs> I'm not gonna say anything. I'll let you say something first. Cause you're gonna be honest. Making him wait for it, making him wait. I actually thought it was gonna be horrendous and <laughs> I it's the spice I taste. It's it's <clears throat> because it's seasoned. It's a hundred percent fantastic. It is like if you serve this to people, they'd be like, what is that? That's awesome, right? That's shocking actually. So it means me. So the secret is uh, brining. Oh. So I brined it, I brined it two changes, three changes of water over two or three days. Straight salt brine? Seasoning salt. Seasoning salt. I use seasoning salt because you can, can you taste a little bit of garlic, I think, in it. Yeah. I, I forget what's in the seasoning salt, but I think there's a little bit of garlic, but seasoning okay. or seasoned salt, I forget whatever it is. But that's a, that's a good start. Rinse it out, keep it cool. Um, that's gonna draw the blood out, which is a little bit of, of flavoring. You're looking at another piece, go ahead. It's not gonna hurt you. <laughs> so it's the idea now at this point, yeah. it's not the taste. Yeah, yeah, it's just, every coyote I've ever dealt with is like crawling around in the manure pile. So you, you only want to eat herbivores then? No, I love my bear meat. bear meat? Yeah. There's no difference. Yeah. yeah. It's just an idea, right? Yeah, yeah, it's just the idea. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, change the water, rinse it out, and then um, what I did was an added step is you just mix the uh, wadobo spice in dry, and then mush it around in the bag and leave it there for another night. It would be less chewy, it's not bad, but it'd be less chewy if you let that sit again for another week or even two in the fridge. Just in the, the wadobo spice? In the dry, dry rub, dry rub. Wadobo, and that would just infuse all the flavors inside the meat, so then when you cook it up, it's gonna come out, um, it would be a lot, a lot tender, it'll break down a little bit more. And you can add some oil in there to wh while you're doing that, but you don't want to put it in the bag if you're adding oil, yeah. it'll break it down. So you want a non reactive I was expecting plastic. something awful. Like, Malt Man looked like he was going to spit yeah. it out. Malt Man, geez, he's had bad luck with stuff, hasn't he? Bad tasting foods? Yes, he's had bad luck with the skunk. We we, we cooked the skunk I've successfully. Not, I have not seen his skunk one. I think he said it was gross. Nobody. Nobody treats the meat properly. Good. You ate an armadillo once. It was like turkey. Yeah. Uh huh. Tastes like a like a dark like a dark meat. Hmm. So you want some more, but you you're holding back because no, I'm good because of the idea. <laughs> it was good meat. So I'm gonna make myself a stir fry now because I'm gonna make it last till uh, hunt tonight. This is gonna be your meal for the day. Yeah. 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 I'm eating coyote. Maybe the. The deer gods will favor you because you're saving fawns. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I'm doing a little favor. Yeah. Jake, I no. nature owes me one deer now. I must I must feel bad eating this in front of you now. No. Because it's so good. <laughs> Dude, I feel bad eating this all in front of you. I'm just gonna wolf it all down. Coyote meat's awesome. Eat coyote, but the back straps. We'll try the legs at some point, I'm sure. No, dude, you want some. <laughs> What else did you put in there? Soy sauce. Soy sauce. Yeah, yeah it's an Asian inspired dish. Yeah. I, told, I, wasn't, I wasn't lying and I told you I was going to make it. Yeah. Kept my word. Yeah. You want a spoon? No. Nope. <laughs> How does it smell? You said, he said off camera just before I put it down. No, it does smell good. It smells good, right? Yeah. So you could, it's a meal for two. I really did make enough for everybody. Yeah, yeah. I believe you. <laughs> Ooh, aha. There's no surprise that it's, it tastes good like this. It tastes good by itself. It tastes good like this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So next time you harvest a coyote, <laughs> save the back straps at least. It's good. There's a lot of food here. Hopefully we get a deer. I don't yeah. know. This was supposed to be a deer video. Let's catch a good coyote. Well, all right. Catch you guys later.